Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise Ship Tour. Today we are on board the Allure of the Seas, one of the largest ships in the world. It used to be the largest when it launched in 2009. It's the second built of the Oasis class ships. I was excited to get on board for four nights here. We're going to show you everything there is to do on board. There is a lot, including zip lining, there's a flow rider, there's rock climbing, there's basketball courts, pools galore. Of course, there's a ton to eat as well, so we're going to show you everything top to bottom, starting at the very top of the ship. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. It helps us out a lot. So let's get started. Let's go up to deck 17. If you're staying on deck 17, you know you've made it because this is where the suites are on board. They also have their coastal kitchen and suites lounge on this level. So that's only for the suite guests as well as select Pinnacle members on board. Those are the people that have sailed many, many nights on board Royal Caribbean. I was able to sneak inside though and take a look inside of what Coastal Kitchen looks like. So this is available just for the suites guests. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Private dining room. Nice little enclave with great views. We're going to have concierges here too. Able to help you with any reservations you might need to have on board. Shore excursions, that sort of thing. This is your one-stop shop if you're staying in the suites on board the Allure of the Seas. The only other part of Deck 17 is actually located in the forward part of the ship. That's going to be your sun deck reserved only for suites and pinnacles members so that is available as well we'll walk by that in a second right now we're walking down to deck 16. You see the wind jammer when i film this of course it was breakfast so this place is absolutely slammed we'll fast forward in time to a lunch in the wind jammer do a little quick tour the wind jammer is of course a classic it's going to be open for breakfast lunch and dinner it's going to be free food everything's included here they do have a bar that does have some extra charged drinks as well. Lots of seating though on the side there as well as in the back of the room. And I have pretty much everything that you could want. I do love the selection on board the Windjammers on all the Royal Caribbean ships that have sailed on. Lots of different options, all pretty delicious. Throughout your cruise, you're gonna have various theme nights on the Windjammer as well for dinner. So if you're not really feeling the main dining room or you don't have one of those specialty dining reservations, you can come up here, grab some food, still have some delicious meal. During my cruise, they had a Caribbean night, fantastic food there. Of course, you can see some Indian food at this station right here and lots of seating towards the back. You have beverages as well. You have coffee, teas, some fruit juices, lemonade that are included in your cruise fare. No need to pay extra for that, so that's really great. Moving on from the wind jammer, we're gonna keep walking on deck 16. So deck 16 wraps, 16 wraps all the pools. This is gonna have a lot of area to walk around, check out the seas. You can see how choppy it was the day I was filming this. Now, most of the smaller ships, this is where the jogging track would be, but this ship is actually big enough that they have their own dedicated jogging track on the lower deck that we'll show you in a bit. Here's a look at the H2O zone. That pool over there to the left is actually like a whirlpool, like a whipsy around like a whirlpool pretty cool stuff there but this deck just walks all the way around the pools you have great views of the ocean you have the mass bar over here to the left that's going to be a typical pool bar there are many pool bars surrounding this area so nothing really too special in terms of like a special menu or anything like that but nice place just to grab a drink keep a watch that sort of thing we do have a nice bridge in between the different areas here this is all looking down Towards Central Park, which we'll show you later in the video. Very unique aspect of the Oasis of the Seas is this Central Park down there. You can see the various pools located on either side. We're going to walk around this whole deck and show you everything. If you are someone who likes to lounge out in the sun all day, I do recommend grabbing one of those sun loungers early in the day. Those are going to be taken here shortly after I shot this video. Shot it kind of early in the morning on a cooler day, or else those would have already probably been taken. So. Just keep that in mind. They have a lot of cool seating options too. You see those sunbeds, those are first come first serve. Those aren't able to be reserved in advance or have any costs associated with them, which is great. Now we're walking up to the entrance to the Pinnacle Suite deck. Unfortunately, can't come up here for this video because I'm not staying in a suite, but that's private reserve. They have a bar up there just for the suites passengers. Over to the right, you see the top of the cantilevered whirlpools is one of my favorite features of some of the newer Royal Caribbean ships. These whirlpools actually hang out over the edge of the cruise ship, being looked down to the ocean. And of course, it's a gigantic hot tub. An abundance of hot tubs on board the Oasis class ships, which I find to be a great feature. 
Right now we're walking into the solarium top floor. This is going to be the adults only area 16 and up. This is one of my favorite areas on board the Allure of the Seas. So it's got a nice tranquil feel. It's at the very front of the ship. It's got great views, nice and sunny, and they have these nice wind blockers that really do a good job of blocking the wind. You can still enjoy the pools and the whirlpools without stuff just getting blown all over the place. So we'll show you that when we go down one deck, but this is the top floor. Nice little look here. Lots of seating areas, fun places to hang around for sure. But we are going deck by deck here, so we're going to check out the rest of deck 16 before making our way down to 15 and checking out the rest of the solarium. Up ahead there is another cantilevered whirlpool. So that's going to be adults only because it is in the solarium section. Lots more sun loungers over here. I find the sun decks on the Oasis class ships to be rather unique because they are split up by those massive canyons uh, that they had to engineer to create the boardwalk and the Central Park area. So you have pools on either side of this massive ship. Some more hot tubs down there. So now we're gonna take the stairs down to 15 and explore the aft part of deck 15, come back up to 16 though, because there's a lot more adventure happening on 16 in the back of the ship behind the wind jammer where we just were. another one of the pools on board the Allure of the Seas. This one kind of has a nice little entry area, not quite zero entry, but a little shelf there to uh, walk into the pool. Lots more sun loungers as you can see. Now we're going to turn under. You see the towel stand right there, that's where you're going to grab your towel. I would definitely remember to return the towels each cruise because there is a $25 charge if they don't mark off that you did return the towels. So the bar to the left there is called appropriately pool bar and that's located right next to this pool right here which is the sports pool. So this is gonna have your volleyball net and maybe some basketball going on during the day. It's gonna be a, a lot more action also where the belly flop competition is. You'll see a lot of seating areas over here with nice tables. Up ahead is the Patty Dive Shop, so you can pick up materials for scuba diving as well as snorkeling. And then they also do scuba diving classes on board on longer sailings. So you can get scuba certified there, which is pretty fun. I am a scuba certified Patty member, so something that I definitely enjoy doing while on shore on my cruises. Have you guys been on Allure of the Seas? What's your favorite area of this ship? Let me know in the comments. The teen areas, the living room, etc., are going to be to the left here. So, all really close to pretty much the fun part of the Allure of the Seas. Now, very interestingly, Allure of the Seas does not have a water slide. This actually surprised me completely when I jumped on board because I've been on so many new Royal Caribbean ships or ships that have been amplified. We've added lots of water slides, this ship being one of the bigger ones. Surprised to see that they did not have any water slides on board. This area is called The View. This also has Allure of the Seas' mini golf course. This is a little bit more unique than the other golf courses that I've seen on most of the Caribbean, Royal Caribbean ships that I've been on because it hasn't been redesigned and amplified. So it's gonna have more of a traditional mini golf design, which I think is pretty cool. Over to the left there is the included zip line. This is open throughout your cruise, completely included in your cruise fare. Now I did promise that we would return to deck 16 and that's what we are about to do. We're gonna climb the stairs we're gonna go check out some of the Flowrider stuff. That what we just walked past was pretty cool. I thought that was a fun little kids area that they can go mini golfing with slightly larger holes. So there's two Flowriders on board, one on either side 
of this part of deck 16. They do boogie boarding style as well as stand up if you're good at that. So a lot of surfers on board, something fun to watch too. So you can sit on those benches there, grab a cocktail, watch people wipe out all day. Lots of seating areas back here too. Great views of the wake. Probably my favorite view of any cruise ship is the wake view. You also have the wipeout bar back here so you can grab a drink pretty easily if you're watching people surf. As you can see beyond there on the higher decks, those are the premium suites on board. That's where we started this tour, deck 17 and then 18 above it. There are some two-story suites on board the Allure of the Seas. Now we're going to take this ramp down to deck 15 again. It's where you're going to find your activities, your sports court. So while I passed by, they were playing some pickleball. That's really great. You got pickleball on board now. They actually do pickleball classes for an extra fee as well. So if you've never tried pickleball, it might be a great time on board Royal Caribbean. Start your pickleball career. This is also the basketball court. They do adult dodgeball, which is super fun. You can throw a ball at your fellow passengers. Lots of activities going on here on the activities court. This area is slightly unique to Allure of the Seas. This is called the Wipeout Cafe, but it is now featuring El Loco Fresh, which has been a popular addition to many other Royal Caribbean ships. This is the Mexican restaurant. This is included in your cruise fare as well. It gets a decently long line, I've noticed, but really, really good food. You can check out some of my cruise videos day by day on Allure of the Seas to see how my meals went in here, but really a big fan of El Loco Fresh and something I check out every cruise. Now we've basically walked around the teen areas in this video, so now we're going to fill in the gaps a little bit. So fuel is one area for the kiddos. Fuel is the teens only nightclub. They didn't have this open during open house and I'm not going to storm in there when the teens are actually using it. But here's a quick little look at their nightclub. So that is available open, you know, later hours. There is a 1 a.m. curfew for anyone under 18 on board Royal Caribbean ships. It's going to run up until probably about that time. See the ping pong table over there to the left too. Very popular with the teenagers as well as families. That's all for use. This is the back porch. The living room is the teen section, the interior part of this area. So the teens are kind of walled off and separate completely from the littler kids, which have Adventure Ocean that we'll show you in a bit. But really cool space here. Felt funky, felt pretty brand new. They have air hockey and they have foosball. Lots of fun here. They even have, I think, like a smoothie bar going on. So you can sign up the first day of your cruise and they can come and go as they please. They got video games, all the things that teens love. Pretty cool stuff. Now, of course, right next to the teens area is what I like to joke is the teen casino, which is of course the arcade. So Royal Caribbean does a great job of putting those arcades right where all the kids are. Those you can get a little bit of a discount on your arcade games before you cruise by buying those credits on your Royal Caribbean app. Just note, arcade games are not free, so your kids could definitely rack up a bill pretty quickly if you let them loose. They do have ticketed prize redemptions on some of the games in here too. So overall pretty fun. A lot of games kind of go down throughout the cruise though. A lot of rough play happen in here. But fun air hockey options for the whole family too. So not just teens you'll find in here for sure. But let's continue our tour of deck 15. Again, this is a very big deck. A lot of stuff going on here, lots of pools. We're gonna go check out a little bit of the H2O zone. So this is gonna be a little bit more of the little kid area. This has a splash pad. This has that whirlpool that I showed you earlier. They do have some hot tubs for the parents so that they can watch their kids and still enjoy themselves a little bit, but nice, bright, fun colors here. Lots of spray, spray areas and things that uh, the kids just absolutely go bonkers for. This is called the sandbar over here. So this is gonna be opposite of the pool bar that we showed you earlier, basically the same menu too. We're walking up to the beach pool.
now we're gonna make our way over to the solarium the lower level of the solarium the main level it's gonna be my favorite area of the ship great relaxing place to read a book sunbathe without getting super sunburned really nice spot we're gonna walk right past this cantilevered hot tubs as well that I showed you from above so these have TVs in the pool as well so they're gonna have sporting events on in there pretty large always busy too now my favorite restaurant on board is a specialty restaurant it's over here to the left called Samba during the day it's actually called the Solarium Bistro and it's included in your cruise fare but at night it turns into the Brazilian Steakhouse and it's an extra charge you can check out my review of that dining experience on day four of my Allure of the Seas journey, which is available on the channel. I'll put those videos down in the show notes. If you saw earlier in the video, Windjammer Cafe was quite busy for breakfast. This place, not as much, has similar food. I would come here if you're on board Allure of the Seas. That's my big tip for breakfast. I just love how these chairs look out over the ocean. You have some cool plants similar to Central Park in here. It makes it feel like a real park-like environment that you're lounging in all day. They do have, of course, hot tubs and some pools in the center here. But just a really relaxing, nice, tranquil space. One pretty cool thing is that Adventure Ocean is located in this section as well. So you can drop your kids off at the kids club and immediately walk over to the adults only section. I think it's pretty convenient for parents, but I think it's also kind of funny that the kids area is right next to the exclusive adults only area. I guess you are separated by a deck because we are going to go down to deck 14 and check out Adventure Ocean, but still nonetheless funny. So starting down on deck 14, this deck is mostly passenger cabins, but in the forward part of this deck is Adventure Ocean, as well as a secret little sun deck that we'll show you in a bit. Adventure Ocean is going to cover everyone on board between the ages of 0 and 12. They're all separated into their own zones. Lots of little breakout rooms too. They have this arts and crafts workshop for drawing or anything that's kind of messy. They have this area here. They have a lot of dedicated space here, not as large as some that you'd find on board the Disney cruise ships, but still a really nice space. This area is called Play, this big circular room, so lots of play happening in there, kind of for different ages, not necessarily cordoned off by individual ages. This Royal Tots room is gonna be the nursery, so you can actually drop off your infant here and go have a specialty dining meal or something like that. Really nice for the parents to have that option. Lots of fun artwork on the wall here. Now most of the kids clubs are included. I believe the nursery does have an extra charge to it, but it's pretty nominal. It's about six or eight dollars an hour. Imagination studio, some more arts and crafts happening in there. Three to five are called Aquanauts on board, so they have their dedicated room here. Really just a cool area for them to make noise, have fun, have a little slide, a little playscape. So everything is kind of designed perfectly for whatever age group is in each room. Connected to the Aquanauts is Explorers. This is going to be kids 6 to 8. They're going to have some video games in here, activities more designed for their age group. And 
and Voyagers is 9 to 11, some more video games. Activity is more designed for that age group. And then the Adventure Science Lab looked pretty fun. Some messy experiments, volcanoes, that sort of thing. Microscopes galore in there. There's a lot of cool activities here for the kids. Now they also do movie nights for the kids, various ages. They'll program things for different sections. So they have their own dedicated theater on board to show those movies, which is pretty cool. They have plush seating. Feels like their own theater just for them. So that rounds out the kid facilities on board. We're gonna keep going up to the sun deck on deck 14. This is an area that not a lot of people are gonna find, honestly. They do have some signage to it, but this is above the bridge and features just awesome views overlooking the forward part of the ship. This is gonna be right underneath the solarium that you see right there. It gets pretty windy out here, but if you're someone like me who just really likes to get up and have great views of the water, this is gonna be a spot. Also on this deck is the Seven Hearts card room. It also kind of doubles as an internet cafe. Deck 12 just has the chef's table, which I didn't experience this trip. Down to deck 11, you do have the crown lounge, which is the former diamond lounge. I'm not quite diamond yet, so I don't get access into here, but you use your room key to be able to buzz in here and you can access this all day. Diamonds and above, though they are starting to limit this on certain cruises to the diamonds. And then next to the Crown Lounge is the library, which was very nice looking. Deck 10 only has staterooms, so let's stop by one of the mini atriums on the Allure of the Seas. Head down to deck nine. Deck nine only has the upper level of Dazzles, which is sort of a nightclub slash multi-purpose room. Has a lot of live music going on and sometimes some trivia. So let's go down to deck eight and check out the main entrance. There was a bluegrass group uh, on board while I was on board, so sometimes it was closed. Also, there were weddings going on. I think this was a great wedding venue. Probably my pick of places on the ship. Really nice and pretty. Decade is also home to Central Park, which is definitely one of the more unique offerings on board all the Oasis class ships. Let's go check it out. Central Park is where you're going to find the majority of the specialty restaurants on board, as well as a few high-end shops and some more casual bar-type environments. The entire place is filled with all completely real plants, which is definitely the more unique side of things. And then you're going to hear bird noises and bugs and stuff like that, and that's all actually piped in via speakers to make it feel like a really cool park environment. 150 Central Park is probably my favorite of the fine dining establishments here. Kind of a high-end seafood, also has steaks. Definitely a little bit more upscale, I think, than chops. To the left there is the top of the Rising Tide Bar. That actually rises between decks between the Royal Promenade and the Central Park here. To the left there is Chops Grill, so that's going to be your traditional steakhouse. They have alfresco seating, which is nice on the Oasis class ships. The trellis bar is over to the left there. They'll make you some fresh tasting cocktails. To the right here is Giovanni's table. This is going to be the Italian offering on board. 
one of my favorite restaurants for sure. Very, very hearty. Come hungry to this place because the helping sizes are gigantic. Park Cafe is an awesome included restaurant in your cruise. It's got a little small buffet, make some fresh salads, sandwiches, that sort of thing. Great spot to grab some breakfast in the morning that's a little less busy than the Windjammer too. Vintages is the wine bar on board. It's got a great interior look to the place. What I love actually is the tapas menu, which is not included in your cruise, but the food is absolutely delicious. And before we depart, you got to see some of the high-end shops that are located here in Central Park. Love this little option. Just definitely feels like a, a European park or something like that. Now let's make our way down to Deck 7. Deck 7 doesn't really have a lot in terms of public-facing facilities. They do have a small Royal Caribbean online little, what looks to be about the size of a stateroom. Um, so if you did forget your computer or if you are still living in the 1990s, you can use the computers here. Deck 6 has a lot of action going on. We're going to start first at the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center. I like to tour the spa on the first day. They do spa tours and then there's also the spa raffle. I've never won the spa raffle in my 20 plus cruises that I've taken. Would love to hear in the comments though if you've ever won the spa raffle. I'm gonna win that thing one of these days and get a free massage. So the Vitality Cafe has a few free items and then your extra charged smoothies, some coffees as well. So another little secret spot to go grab your coffee in the morning if you're looking for that specialty coffee. I'm someone who kind of needs an Americano, iced Americano to function in the morning. So I'm always gonna be using the coffee bars on board. In the salon over here, you can get your random services, of course, your haircuts, your Blowouts, all that stuff, nails, you name it. Never really done much in here. No, never had a need, but a lot of uh, action going on in here for sure. They're all set up for the various services that they offer on board to pitch to people on the first day here. In all honesty, while this is a very large spa facility, I've actually seen way better spas on other ships. I think a lot more money and a lot more time and thinking have gone into these spa facilities as more and more and newer ships have been created. So for instance, on the Disney Wish, they have like an outdoor relaxation area now. I think that's something that's definitely missing here. But I do love the tree as you walk down the stairs to the treatment rooms.
One cool thing here is the thermal suite with the heated stone chairs. It's a very classic spa facility here. You have a lot of other showers and stuff that you can use. Definitely had to try it out while I was in there. One other option for couples is like a couples suite so you can pay for a couples massage and you have a nice hot tub in the room. Pretty cool option here if you're on a honeymoon or just wanna have something special for your cruise. Most of the other rooms in the spa area are just treatment rooms. So we're gonna move on back to where we entered the spa and check out the fitness center, which is open to anyone. This is of course free and included in your cruise. Fitness centers are absolutely gigantic on the Oasis class ships. Always been very impressed with them. And I love the secret stairway down one deck to the jogging track. So you have all of your exercise happening in this section of the ship. I've been making it a point to go to the gym every day on my various cruises I've been taking in 2024. How about you guys? Anyone make it to the gym on their cruise even once? Let me know in the comments. Deck six does have a little bit of the Royal Promenade, which we haven't even made it to yet. That's how big this ship is. It's just absolutely gigantic. So many things going on here. We have a nice preview of the Royal Promenade that we're about to walk down in the atrium that goes all the way down to the entertainment place. What I found here was like a nice little secret seating area. This on newer ships would be filled with something that's making Royal Caribbean money, but on one of the older ships that hasn't been quite redone yet, Allure of the Seas. You have a nice little seating area. Allure of the Seas was just announced that they're going to get a nice renovation, so I'm excited to capture this ship and then come on board again with all the new renovations. So the photo gallery is on this side of Deck 6, across from where we just were. So you can have a nice little photo session with your family, or you can go check out the photos that the photographers have been taking throughout your cruise. They used to have those binders set up because they printed all the photos, now it's all digital. And it's actually really cool. They take your biometric data from your face and they can automatically put everything, every photo that's been taken of you on the cruise into one easy to look at option in case you wanna buy something. This area does have a nice little staircase down to the Royal Promenade as well. Here's that rising tide bar going up to Central Park. Now across the way you saw the schooner bar. This is one of my favorite bars on every Royal Caribbean ship. This is where the trivia happens. Trivia is my favorite activity. If you see me on board, I will be playing trivia at least once a day. The loyalty desk is also in the schooner bar. I'm not as big of a fan of the schooner bars though on board the Oasis class ships. I just feel like they could use some extra space, especially used for trivia as it is a popular activity. So now we've made it to the boardwalk, which is located on deck six aft. This is an awesome little area. This is actually where my cabin was. If you want a full tour of the cabin, check out my Allure of the Seas vlogging that I did on each day of this cruise. So an awesome theming walking into this boardwalk area. This is gonna be the big family area. We've got fun games to play. They have a second arcade on board, which is pretty cool. Hadn't seen that before. You have a little donut area, which I never really saw any donuts in there, but I, I think I just wasn't up early enough, but they do have free donuts. The dog house is also a free restaurant. This is gonna have your hot dogs, your bratwurst, that sort of thing, that's open late. Great place for a midnight snack. And then you have the included carousel as well. This is a very popular and very unique offering on board the Oasis class ships. Over here is the ice cream shop. And then to the right there is the arcade. And to the left is Johnny Rockets. And Johnny Rockets is a specialty restaurant. 
It's about $15 a person, I believe, for lunch or dinner. The secret here, though, is breakfast is actually free here at Johnny Rockets. So if you want that breakfast outside the main dining room and still have some waiter service, it's the place to go, and it is included in your cruise. Over to the right is Sabor. Sabor I actually got to dine at during this voyage. It's a very nice restaurant. Mexican food, but very high-end Mexican food. I think it's worth about the $25 that I paid plus tax and tip uh, for my dinner here. Definitely check that out. This one is probably going to be redesigned in the latest update to this ship, but I was glad to try it before I uh, departed the Allure of the Seas. And they do have a tequila bar right in the middle of the boardwalk. And a fun, funky little kids play area here themed to the Southwest. Do love the look of this. And I saw a lot of kids having fun in there. This is the aqua theater and the rock climbing wall. The rock climbing wall is gonna be on either side of the boardwalk. The aqua theater is where the diving show happens. This is a not to miss show on board any Oasis class ship. Unfortunately, they had a lot of technical difficulties on this ship and uh, I wasn't able to catch it even though I tried twice. So it is what it is, it happens, it's uh, entertainment. But here's a look back at what the boardwalk looks like. One of the cooler neighborhoods on board the Allure of the Seas. There are a number of shops in the boardwalk area as well, located right next to Johnny Rockets. Star Pier sells your sunglasses and that sort of thing, kind of like a sunglass hut. A number of different other items like apparel. There's Candy Beach, which is the candy shop on board. That's all connected in with Pinwheels, which is kind of another, like more little kid apparel store and you can buy like swimsuits and that sort of thing. We're heading down a deck to deck five. This is where you're gonna find your first of several dining rooms. So this level is called Silk. It's all connected and it's all has like a really cool atrium in the middle of the dining room. But uh, this section is called Silk. Depending on what dining time you have, you may end up at Silk. Here's that jogging track that's going to be on deck five for you. A couple laps around is going to be a mile. They actually mark it on the track for you and they give you various distances. It's not like an exact quarter mile like on land. So definitely pay attention to that if you care about distance. But this deck also has the Royal Promenade. So that track is encircling the whole deck on the outside. Royal Promenade is going to run through the middle. The Royal Promenade is going to be a hub of activity on the ship. They actually have a parade that happens once a cruise that goes down. They have parties at night in here. So they have a lot of shops, a lot of bars. They have guest services down here too. So you, if you have a problem on the cruise, if you have a question, this is the spot to go. The champagne bar looked nice and cool. This is actually where like the Bionic bar would be on some of the newer Oasis class ships. So it's nice to see something different here. Not a big fan of the Bionic bar, to be honest with you. I don't know if you guys are. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. But here's that rising tide from the deck that you would actually catch it to go up to the Central Park. If you're looking for an expensive tax-free gift, you have Regalia, which has jewelry and I think some watches in there too. That's going to be located right next to the guest services. And then I wanted to show this little Easter egg. So every ship has a godmother. And this ship's is Fiona from Shrek. So definitely during the DreamWorks character tie-in from like the early 2000s, but Fiona from Shrek is the godmother of the Allure of the Seas. Guest services over there to the left. Then you have Cafe Promenade, which has free to-go snacks as well as coffee in the morning. This is gonna be included in your beverage package over here. You'll see why I make that distinction in just a second. The collection has more shopping. Next cruise desk is gonna be a place that you can book your next cruise and they actually have some cool discounts on board and like extra perks for booking on board. Those stairs going down, go down to the casino. So we'll check out the casino in just a second when we head to deck four. You can see that there's like an actual car on this street, it's that big. And now the new icon of the seas actually has an even bigger Royal Promenade with a pearl, so it's just extra impressive here on Royal Caribbean. Sorrento's to the right, that's gonna be your pizza place. Very, very popular spot, especially late at night because it's one of the only places that's open late. You have the Bow and Stern Pub, that has live music at night and they have a great beer selection in there. If you're a beer drinker, this is gonna be a cool spot for you. Sometimes they do trivia in here too. Love the look of this place though.
keeping moving down Royal Promenade. A lot of shopping going on in the middle. They'll move some sale items out in the middle trying to entice you to buy. A couple other shops. If you're a big shopper, more power to you. I'm just not all that interested in duty-free shopping. I think there's still probably better deals on shore. To the right is Boleros. That's going to be your Latin bar and with awesome live music at night. And then you're going to have Spotlight Karaoke to the left. I played trivia in here. It's not only for karaoke. This will be a very popular spot late at night after a few cocktails for many people on board. They also seem to play some sports in here too, so it's a quasi-sports bar too. They don't have a Playmakers on board Allure of the Seas just yet, so this is kind of the sports bar. If you thought going to sea you were going to avoid Starbucks, think again. There's an actual dedicated Starbucks. You can use your Starbucks app on board. But the coffee at the Cafe Promenade and other places actually Starbucks coffee as well. The coffee that is not at a Starbucks, the Starbucks branded section is actually included in your beverage package. The Starbucks that you get from that Starbucks stand right there, not included. So just keep that in mind. Entertainment place, you have the staircase taking you down to deck four. We're going to go check that out in just a sec. At the end of deck five is the upper level of the Amber Theater. So they're going to have Broadway shows on board. When I was on board, it was Mamma Mia, which is about two and a half hours long. A little too long, I think, for me on a cruise vacation, but for Broadway fans, that is available for you. This is also where your magicians and your comedians, well, they actually have a dedicated comedian area on board, but maybe a welcome aboard show. This is all going to happen here in the theater. So moving down to deck four, we're going to check out all the entertainment place offerings. So this is going to be where a number of different fun activities are, including the casino. So on board, they've actually opened a non-smoking section of the Casino Royale, which I find really amazing. They have table games in here. They also have slot machines. No smoking at all. This is a completely separate area, and I absolutely love that. Now, Blaze is the nightclub on board. My nightclub days are long past me, but never really saw this place open during regular hours. I think they maybe do some art, art auctions and stuff in there or certain cruises. To the left here is the Comedy Live. I ended up skipping that, uh, but it is available to you if you're into comedy. And then Studio B is an awesome option. This is where your ice skating happens. So they actually have ice skating for the guests that you can reserve on the app. And then you actually have an ice skating show as well on board. Really unique offering from Royal Caribbean. No other company does that. So see the art gallery spread through the walls here. Don't waste your money on that. Not a big fan of Park West. I think that it's all kind of a scam. So please don't buy the art. Now I'm not allowed to film in Casino Royale when it's open. So I did film it from the other direction when the cruise ship was in port when everything was closed off, so you can check that out here.
So walking through the casino, you'll end up at the grand section of the main dining room. So this is going to be kind of a second of three levels. We're wrapping up our tour here, but Azumi is located right next to the deck four section of the main dining room. Azumi, fantastic place. Hibachi grills, you have sushi bar as well. We'll do sushi making classes in here for an extra charge during your cruise. Really fantastic restaurant. Highly recommend booking in the app before your cruise because it's gonna be the most popular onboard restaurant that is specialty dining. Deck three has the American Icon Grill, which is the lowest level of the main dining room and also has the conference center. But that is it for the Allure of the Seas. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, leave me a comment.